Hello, I'm Tom Bailey, and in today's episode, I'm joined by Debbie Clark, who is known as the Happy Business Coach and is an award-winning, yellow-obsessed empowerment and marketing coach, helping entrepreneurs to build businesses that they love. So, Debbie, hello, and a very warm welcome to today's episode. I love that intro. I'm just going to listen back and then write mm-hmm. that down. I like that yes, intro. You Thank you for inviting me on, Tom. It's great to be here with you. Thank you so much. And whereabouts are you in the world right now? Um, so I'm in the Nottingham, in the mm-hmm. Nottingham. It's uh, yeah. in the UK and we are like slap bang in the middle of the country. So almost the furthest point from the sea that you can get from any other yeah. place uh, in the UK. So yeah, in the middle. So, so no popping to the beach then in Nottingham, unfortunately. I have done it once with a friend. It's like a two mm-hmm. and a bit hour drive. We yeah. drove to the beach, got out, had a swim, got back in the car and drove all the way back went, again. Went back home. <laughs> um, it was a long journey, but it was a super hot day and, and well worth it. So you, you can just do it in a day, yeah. you know, if you're dedicated to the beach. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you so much. And let me now just quickly dive into the subject of Debbie then in a little bit more detail. So sure. Debbie is a digital marketing lecturer, podcaster, entrepreneur toolkit author, and was also named as Digital Woman of the Year, as well as one of 2020's top 20 inspirational marketers. The title for today's episode is How to Build a Business You Love. And Debbie's going to show us how to do that in just seven minutes. Oh, my God. OK. No, no pressure at I don't all. know if we can swear, but oh, my God, seven minutes. <laughs> we, well, we, can, seven, we can edit that out. Seven, seven is questions. my number. There you go. Fantastic. And the first question today is who are your ideal clients? Ah, I love this question because this is the thing that people get stuck on a lot, mm-hmm. like as entrepreneurs, who are your ideal clients? So for me, they tend to be women, although probably a third of my clients actually are men. And here's yeah. the rub with the ideal clients. Even if you're kind of really clear on who your ideal clients are, it doesn't mean that people who aren't your ideal clients can't see you fall in love exactly. with you and want to buy your services. So for me, my other clients tend to be women. Mm-hmm. Um, they tend to be professionals. They tend to have already had a career that they were very good at and they have decided to launch their own business. They might have been running their own business for several years yeah. and they kind of got to a bit of a crux point where it's like, I want it to grow. I'm not quite sure on the strategy. I know that I need to be more visible. I'm not quite sure how to do mm-hmm. that. Yeah, and maybe it. realizing that there's some kind of confidence and mindset stuff that's holding them back and maybe just needing some accountability and strategy. Yeah, so They're the people I really like working with, but actually it tends to be a whole range of people and they tend to be service-based businesses. Yeah. So there's that as well, but you know, okay, tends to come through the door. Well, exactly. But let's think about that typical client. What is usually the biggest challenge that they face? Um, The biggest challenge they face is that they are the brand and that they probably work for big organizations where they can present that organization, present that that brand, sell those products with ease because there's Mm -hmm. almost like a disconnect. Well, it's not it's not me that I'm selling. It's the business. And I think it's then when you are the person and you're selling yourself and that's quite a vulnerable place Mm. to be. And yeah. it can feel a little bit like you're making it up as you go along. Yeah. I'm making up syndrome. prices. Yeah, imposter but, syndrome. I yeah. don't know. I get my prices out of thin air. I don't yeah. know, you know, I don't know where these clients come from. I, it doesn't feel like there's a strategy. Maybe they've built it through word of mouth. But I think it's that vulnerability piece of mm-hmm. you are the brand and yeah. how that kind of sits with us. Yeah. I think Americans work really well with it. Yes. But British yeah, people are a little bit more reserved yeah so let, let's think of those reserved british people that are listening to this <laughs> podcast episode then hello, um, hello. <laughs> with, with that imposter syndrome and that being the brand what what impact does that typically have on their their business or, or themselves yeah i mean it can be as debilitating as not being able to put yourself out there and market yourself mm-hmm. So it can be like, I just, I, I can't, I, I yeah. do it very rarely and I feel really uncomfortable. So it can be, you know, can stop you in the tracks as that much, but it can be like, I know that I'm doing good work. I know that I've got really good testimonials. There's just, it just feels like I'm holding myself back in yeah. some way. And when you kind of dig into what's the problem, why am I not growing or why am I not doing that? The answer generally tends to be, ah it's me 
Yes. And that doesn't always sit well, is it? It's an uncom- It's a bit of pill to swallow that you're responsible for it, what okay. it is, your success. Yeah. So let's take that then as, as the frame. So given that, what is one piece of advice that you might give to somebody who's who's come to you with, with this challenge that you just mentioned? <laughs> the one piece of advice? Yeah. I think it's that um, the work's got to start with you inside. Mm-hmm. And yes. that might be looking at the the truths that you hold because we all we have this narrative that we tell ourselves about the world and the people around us and actually kind of stopping and maybe writing those things down the things that you're telling yourself about yourself or about your clients or about the world and asking yourself is that true yeah is it really yeah. true what is true about that because what happens is our brain tells us a set of things and we just believe it's true because our brain's telling us that is how it is but it's generally not but sometimes okay. not our best friends. Amazing. Thank you. And I've just checked out your website recently, actually. I've seen you've got loads of amazing resources on there. Is is there one in particular that you'd want to suggest or offer to people that are listening to this episode? Yeah. So on my website, there's a tab called freebies. And mm-hmm. um, it's it's a lead capture where you just get everything thrown at you. And it's just Great. like, here's the things that I've ever, always created. Um, for me, one of the things that I really love on there is like a three video series, helping people delve into what their values are. Yes. Because I believe that like really understanding who you are and the pl- where you are in the world and what you've got to add to the world gives you a strong concrete foundation and the stronger that foundation is the better our businesses will be yeah brilliant and i've got the url here so it's debbiedudar.co.uk forward slash freebies and i'll put a link to that in the show notes below this episode thank you no problem and the next question from me today then is what would you say is your greatest failure that you've ever made either in life or business and what did you learn from it Ah, uh, so Tom, how long is this podcast? Like, how long have we got to talk about these things? A couple of minutes so, left. <laughs> <laughs> I have had a lot of what you might call failures in life, but I don't believe that there's any such thing as failure. Mm-hmm. So I've had things that maybe decisions that I haven't made that were well thought out yeah. um, in life and business. Um, But actually, I can't go and undo any of those things because I wouldn't be where I am now. So I'm not really a believer in failures. I'm just a believer in you just do this stuff and it makes you who you are. Um, So, yeah, none. I haven't found anything. It's all part of the pie of Debbie. It's brilliant. I love it. That's a great perspective to have on that one. Thank you so much. And the last question for me today, then, is what is one question that I should have asked you that will also give some great value to our audience today? Why do I always wear yellow? Good question. Why do you always wear yellow? (laughs) Uh, It's a really good branding tool. Like if you can find something that enables people to associate with you, then, you know, people have said to me, like, I'm getting dressed this morning and I put on a yellow scarf and I thought, oh, God, I need to ring Debbie. And I'm not in their room and they're not looking at social media and they've literally just woken up. So if you can find something that will help set you apart and help make your brand stand out, that's going to help you build um, a strong business in the future. Love it. Amazing final tip for today's episode. So Debbie, thank you so much again for your time today and for sharing such great value with our audience. Thank you.